about 20 million children are out of school in the country and today we'll be looking at ways to upscale the educational sector in the country to accommodate this somewhat 20 million uh, out of school children and joining us is the uh, secretary general nigerian national commission on unesco dr olagunju ido uh, he will be speaking to us about ways to uh, you know mitigate some of these uh, challenges facing the educational sector in nigeria you're very much welcome doctor well, good morning and uh, i appreciate being here this morning Thank you. all right what was your take with regards to 20 million children being out of school according to uh, the unesco appraisal what, what is your assessment of that thank you so much and um, uh, let me lay the foundation of uh, my intervention on uh, three different perspectives. Number one, as a Nigerian, a very patriotic one for that matter, that believes so much that Nigeria is able to solve every problem, every challenge we are able to work on. And uh, secondly, the focal point, focal person for the uh, UNESCO matters in Nigeria and also a staff of Federal Ministry of Education. I want to state here that it's, uh, the issue of 20 million or 18.3 million you know, will, uh, is not something that we can be contesting this morning. In actual fact, UNICEF brought 18.3, whereas UNESCO brought 20 million. But in any case, uh, we are quite aware that we have a serious problem the challenges that we have, we cannot uh, wish them away. We have a problem of uh, out of school children and uh, Nigeria is really doing so much to ensure that we are able to uh, overcome all these challenges. And uh, I will, if you permit me with time, I will be able to read out some of the things that Nigeria has been doing, especially Federal Ministry of Education under this administration of uh, President uh, I think it's important to carry our viewers at home along and would like to find out more on the efforts of the governments of the day in line with the situation of out-of-school children. Yes, the, the government of the day is quite uh, serious and have been doing so much. And uh, there is a strong mandate that uh, the Federal Ministry of Education have been given to tackle this very many and uh, if i would like to tell let me if i can reel out some of the, the yes please go ahead few ones that have been done and especially the ones that have been done recently i will start with that nigeria appreciate the fact that the uh, the uh, uh, section 15 of uh, the child rights uh, child rights act is saying that every child is entitled to free compulsory universal basic education and as such nigeria is not joking with it more so nigeria is a very strong member of united nations and that makes it also a member of unesco the 58th member of unesco for that matter uh, the, now the issue is being tackled at long recently there is a three-year ruling plan that nigeria is already uh, already working on and uh, the federal ministry of education along with some of the subnationals some state governments and uh, the development partners they are working it out so that at least 70 percent of these out of school children will be back to school in the next three years and this will be reviewed every year that is, there is a monitoring and evaluation system that will be uh, monitor that will be monitoring this, evaluating this towards uh, making sure that it is achieved. Seventy percent will be back to school in the next three years, and uh, it is not only going to be done by the, uh, the government. Development partners are involved, and also the state government, the subnationals are also involved, and uh, this one is commencing immediately and is being chaired by the, uh, the, the, the Honorable Minister of Education, 
Professor Tai Mama. Now, the, there are some other things that have been done before now and that are still ongoing. And I would like to let you know some of these few ones. Uh, there is the, a program we call Agile. Agile, that is uh, Adolescent Girls Initiative for Learning and Empowerment. Agile. It's been home for the past three years. And the, 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 the real aim is to bring out girls who have been uh, out of school, bring them back to school. And the, the, the very first phase of this program is being sponsored by World Bank. The very first phase is uh, the, uh, the, the pilot scheme is uh, with the, uh, for about seven states, covering about seven states, Bono, Ikiti, Kaduna, Kano, Katsina, Kebi, and Plateau. And this, this had, uh, has really helped so much. Sponsored by World Bank, uh, under Federal Ministry of Education, and a lot has been done. If I will tell you now, another 11 states have been picked the, for the next financing, which is Adamawa, Bauchi, uh, Gombe, Jigawa, Kogi, Kwara, Nasarawa, Niger, Sokoto, Yobe, and Zamfara. This one will commence very soon. The objective is to take these girls back to school, give them more opportunities for secondary education at least. The girls between the ages of 10 and 20 years. So 3,143,497 learners have already benefiting from this. Now, Dr. Idu, yeah. some of the challenges, I would suppose, especially questions that Nigerians would be asking in terms of the Agile program, especially with adolescent girls being taken back to school, will now hinge on challenges with insecurity. Many are still trying to heal from the wounds of the Chibok girls, and quite recently, the adoption of over 200 more children in particularly the northwest, northeast regions of the country. Now, this multi-sectorial and uh, multilateral approach engaging stakeholders to ensure that this project is back on track and their provisions to ensure security of these girls in school. Yes, the government has done so much and is doing so, so much towards securing our schools, not only uh, and also collaborating with the Ministry of Education is collaborating with so many security agencies in this line, and a lot is being done towards upscaling the security arrangements in our schools. And uh, the, with the support of some development partners, including UNESCO, so many things are being brought on board for the schools to be upscaled in the area of security. Very correct, Doctor. So, but the challenge is now in implementation. Many Nigerians remember the Safe School Initiative, a beautiful policy framework on paper, but implementation continues to remain some of the challenges that stakeholders, much like UNESCO, are, are, are trying to address. In actual fact, um, you know, when the program commences, there will also still be some teething problems. But these teething problems have been undoed. Most especially, we, we need more of advocacy and more of sensitization. Sensitization on the part of those who are beneficiaries and advocacy on the part of those who are to implement. And this, the ministry is not taking it so lightly. The ministry, especially in under this administration, that is very serious with renew hope, uh, this renew hope agenda. A lot is being done, and as I tell you, uh, the, the, these actions are ongoing. Well, well, well doctor, uh, you have highlighted uh, some measures that UNESCO and other, uh, you know, relevant stakeholders are taking in ensuring that uh, these children are back to school. But let's also take a look at the root cause of the problem what are some of the barriers in your opinion and in your capacity uh, what are some of the barriers that you think uh, are causing these children to not have access to quality education yes, uh, one of them is cultural uh, issues uh, the cultural beliefs you would always want to believe that some people would feel that in some parts of the country Oh, the, the girls are going to change their names very soon. They will soon be married. And as such, they should not go to school and all the rest. And some will also believe that, oh, the boys, they should be useful in the farm. So th there are cultural beliefs. 
and there is also the the mongoose uh, problem of poverty. We must not wish that away. Now we go to insecurity in some parts of the country. Those are issues that the ministry is not taking lightly. They are uh, the ministry is looking at them from all angles and trying to give a holistic approach towards this uh, issue of uh, out of school. Are there, are there any specific uh, policy recommendations uh, that UNESCO has made to the federal government of Nigeria? And if yes, what are these possible uh, policy recommendations? And how soon do we see both parties actively acting on it? Yes, in actual fact, UNESCO has been making a lot of recommendations to the federal government. And almost on every two weeks basis, we meet UNESCO will come and meet with the Honorable Minister profiling solutions. And uh, there is this uh, uh, DOTS, the priority area, D-O-A-O-T-S, that the, the Ministry of Education is championing under this present Minister of Education. And in, along with UNESCO, DOTS means that is the, the D there means data. The O there means out of school, which is a serious issue that we want to tackle. And the teacher, the, the T there is teacher's capacity building. And S there means uh, the skills development. UNESCO is working with the, with the Ministry of Education hand in hand towards making sure that these four priority areas can address this issue of youth skills development and also out of school. And the, 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 the government is also trying to review our skills development policy now. And the, uh, the, the Ministry of Education has, has brought in UNICEF and UNESCO towards drafting this very new skills development policy that will also help in, uh, uh, in uh, reducing the out-of-school children uh, and also help our youth uh, skills of, uh, of scaling. Now, now, turning away from uh, you, you know UNESCO's relationship with the federal government, let's also take a look at UNESCO's relationship with NGOs and the private sector. How do you think uh, these two can you know play a crucial role in getting the about twenty million out of school children? back to school what major roles do you think they can play yes unesco is doing so much unicef is doing so much and there are so many ngos working with unesco in this area because we have understood that there is also a need the need to consider those who are in, in not in the former sector those who are not in the former sector of education those that's the non-former sector and those who are in informal sectors, those ones who are uh, the, 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 the are learning trades along the street and all the rest, they also have to be considered under this very scheme that we are talking about. So most of these NGOs have been brought on board for this. They have already been handling issues like this. So they have been brought on board to work with the Federal Ministry of Education along with UNESCO towards tackling this very big ministers before us. And, and how do you uh, distinguish NGOs who are really there to work and help uh, this course and other NGOs who are just uh, there to take money and not really do what they're supposed to do? Because we have a lot of them. Almost everybody wants to own an NGO. They are, they are NGOs in different parts of the country that are not really necessary. Thank you. The, the Nigerian National Commission for UNESCO is directly in charge of registering NGOs. And uh, we registered the NGOs not uh, uh, just registering. We do a lot of due diligence towards making sure that these NGOs are doing this very thing that they claim they are doing. They, they must be registered with the CAC. Not only that, they will, they, 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 they will be cleared by EFCC and not only that, they will be cleared by the Federal Ministry of Education that they are working on education. If it is other, other area, they will go and be cleared by the ministry that is in, in charge. And at, and at the end of the day, the national uh, budget and planning will also clear them. So we, we take them through a, this long process towards making sure that the NGOs that we are using, they are NGOs that are credible.
Now, much in line with the collaboration and strategic partnership between the government, UNICEF, UNESCO, and other strategic partners, there's something you highlighted earlier, and I'd like for us to also inform the viewers more. Uh, just a couple of months back, there was the inauguration of the Digital Innovation Hub here in the FCT to increase teacher training capacity in light with our ever-evolving digital world. Now, now, the Honorable Minister speaking there, Honorable Tahir Maman, talked about the need for more concerted efforts to be able to replicate this in other states. Care to shed more light on that? Yes, uh, the, I would like to let you know that the skills development, upskilling, the the the, uh, the 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 capacity of our youth is of uh, paramount importance to this honourable minister, Professor Maman Tayu, and um, under the, uh, the program that I've just mentioned now, the priority areas, he keeps on stressing this over and over again. Although we have the ideas project that is already doing a lot in that area and working with uh, 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 it's also be, uh, being uh, sponsored by the world bank and it's, it's uh, if i want to let you know now that that is uh, the the tivet area that's developing the tivet that is uh, the uh, the technical vocational education uh, and training and uh, a lot is being done they are also covering as i as i'm talking to you now over 6000 have benefited from this digital Traits and uh, the the MBT that's National Board for Technical Education has also uh, been training some people in various digital traits. At least not less than one thousand have benefited from Mastercraft apprenti apprenticeship in, in recent time. So all this being brought together, they are they are moves by the ministry towards uh, making sure that the the the, the digital uh, uh, skills acquisition, more so the teachers who are the real people that will teach this, they are also being upscaled in their, uh, in, in the, in their capacities. Now, let's also look at some of the short term and future projections in terms of how much this policy and recommendation would have effects in our educational sector in line with the 20 million out of school children. What are UNESCO's immediate priorities in, say, the next one or two years? Uh, you, you, UNESCO will want to see in Nigeria without any single child on the streets out of school. That is the ultimate aim of UNESCO. And there are so many activities being brought on board. In fact, I must let you know, some of these ones that I have not even talked about, there are there are uh, programs going on that is this O3 program O3 means our rights our lives our future this is targeted at girls because the the girls are the most vulnerable when we're talking about all this so and unesco is doing a lot a, a lot of states uh, many states in nigeria they have keyed in into this project i was uh, in lagos state recently when one was uh, done and you will see that a lot of uh, states are happy having this on board because uh, girls are being taught how to to defend their rights and some boys also who are of their age they are being taught how they can also defend the right of the girls many girls will leave the school because there is no wash facility they don't they can there's no water and this and that Especially how would when they, they are menstruating but when they are menstruating how would they take care of themselves so all these issues the unesco is also doing this one at the back to ensure that and they are doing it in collaboration with federal Ministry of education towards ensuring that girls stay in school so it's not only out of school now retention is also an issue that is being handled along with out of school now, now in closing uh, dr Edo, let's get your thoughts what would be your uh, message of convince your convince message to uh, the nigerian public stakeholders and even in the, even the international community with regards to how important uh, education is to uh, these children yes education is as is as good as the blood in the body you cannot do without education if there will be development 
And as such, any parent that does not send the child to school or uh, that does not see it as a serious issue, that they, 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 they are as good as not uh, looking at a future that is bright. And the, 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 the destiny of any nation is dependent on educating its youth, education is young, educating its younger ones. And uh, my advice is that this issue of out of school is not an issue that we should wish away. It's an issue that every one of us should take seriously. And the ministry is doing this, uh, so much. The government is doing so much. On the parent side, they should also do so much. And the society is also expected to do so much. That means even corporate bodies should come on, come on board to support the Ministry, the ministry of Education and all various states and subnationals towards doing this as their corporate social responsibility. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Doctor, uh, for finding the time to come around and share your thoughts with us today. Thank you. Now, Dr. Idowu has highlighted a call to action, citing the current administration's concerted efforts in line with the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Metibu, now under the Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman, in line with upscaling the education sector to accommodate more than 20 million out-of-school children. Now, we'll take a short break and when we return, we'll have our concluding segment on the program this morning. Do well to stay with us. <laughs> 